What's going on guys? So it was very early in my lifting career when I was training at the uh, Melbourne University Weightlifting and Powerlifting Club under one of my coaches and mentors, David Jame, when he said to me in a really off the cuff kind of comment that the squat is all about position and balance. He didn't really mean anything by this. He wasn't really trying to teach me anything. He just kind of mentioned it very uh, loosely. But it's something that stuck with me ever since. The squat is all about position and balance. And that's what I want to talk to you uh, today about, specifically balance. Now, when I refer to balance, I'm not talking about balance left to right. I'm talking about forward and back. Uh, that is, you know, not falling on your toes and, and not falling on your heels. One of the biggest mistakes that I see lifters make when they're uh, doing their squats is that they lose balance on the descent. Now, the descent is arguably the most important part of the lift, right? If you execute the descent well, you're setting yourself up to lift the bar well. Um, and similarly, if your descent is trash, then you're going to have a really hard time trying to lift the bar again. So having a really smooth descent, one that uh, sets you up well for the lift is really important. That sets you up for the, you know, for the concentric phase of the lift is really important. But the biggest mistake that I see lifters make uh, on the descent of the squat is that they lose balance. Specifically, they lose balance backwards. Now, this is a really common error that lifters make when they're performing you know, the typical powerlifting style, low bar style squat. Uh, you know, they cue hips back, um, and as such, they end up losing balance on the descent. They end up moving backwards onto the heels. And it's, really, it's for a really simple reason. You've got to think that if the lifter is standing uh, upright at the start of their squat before they've started the descent and they're balanced, if their hips move backwards, then you know, some of their mass has moved backwards also. So the center of mass has moved back. So if you are balanced on your midfoot to start with and then you commence the squat by shifting your hips back, what you've essentially done is you've shifted part of your mass backwards and part of the system's mass backwards also. That is back onto your heels. Now this is really obvious to see when um, you'll see lifters descent and uh, their toes raise off the floor. Really common issue in the squat. It also appears in the RDL or, or deadlift variants as well. So keep an eye there. So we don't want our uh, hips to be going back in isolation because that means that, again, our body weight moves back and then our toes come off the floor and we lose balance. What we need to do in order to compensate for some of our body weight moving backwards is we need some of our weight to move forwards. So the cue that I often use with lifters is hips back, chest forward, right? Or hips back, chest down, not as often. The idea is that if your hips are gonna move backwards in the squat, your chest needs to move forwards or it needs to feel like it's moving forwards in order to compensate for your hip break so that you remain balanced. Now, I'm not telling you to like uh, do a good morning or fall over forward. All I'm saying is you need to think about slightly leaning forward uh, in the descent. So what I'm gonna to do today is uh, take you through some demos in the gym, show you what that looks like and show you, uh, you know, some of the errors that people make and the cues that I use to correct those things. Okay, so we're now over at the squat rack and what I wanna do is demonstrate to you what I'm uh, talking about when I say, uh, as the hips go back, the chest has to go forward. So before I even do anything with the bar, what I'm gonna do is set up here just with my body weight. Right? And what you're, gonna do, what you're gonna see is that I'm standing upright. And you can see that I'm balanced, right? I'm not on my heels and I'm not on my toes. I'm just balanced. Now, if the squat starts where my torso stays stationary, right? there's no movement in my torso, and my hips go back, what you can see is that my body weight's gone back also. Okay, it's the only way for it to happen. If my hips go back, my body weight's going back as well. And the more my hips go back, the more I'm gonna fall over backwards. So it's very important that in order to stay balanced, as your hips go back, your chest has to go forward. A really easy example for you to see this is when someone performs a good morning. A correct good morning should have a lot of forward lean and a lot of uh, movement forward, anterior translation of the chest. So it should look like this. You know, a good squat should look like this. Well, you can see here, right now, I'm balanced, right? I'm not on my heels, because that's too far back. I'm not on my toes, because that's too far forward. Instead, I'm just balanced on my midfoot. And you'll, you'll be able to see, compared to the standing position, that my chest is forward. My chest isn't here, or my torso, I should say, really. My torso isn't here, my torso is slightly forward. Okay, so it's gonna be a really similar thing that when we've got the bar on our backs. In fact, it's gonna be identical. If I'm gonna be standing here, I'm upright and balanced. And what you'll notice is that as my hips go back, I end up falling backwards. You can see I'm on my heels now. And instead, what we wanna be able to do is cue ourselves, you know, torso forward. You know, as the hips go back, allow yourself to lean forward. And here I'm balanced. I'm not on my toes. I'm not on my heels. It's too far back. I'm balanced right in the middle. 
Balance through the descent, hips back, chest forward. Upright, and balance at the, at the start of the lift as well. Hips back, chest forward. Put a bit of weight on the bar. Okay, now I've got 60 kilos, so you know, 132 pounds, a little bit of weight, and you'll see it's the exact same thing. In terms of my balance, I'm right on my midfoot already. So I'm standing upright on my midfoot. If my hips go back on the way down, or if I, you know, cue hip break, I get this kind of motion, right? Hips back, toes come up. It's not what we want. What we want is hips back, chest forward, big, big toe down. Keep your toes on the floor. Okay, so same concept, we've got 100 kilos now, so 220 pounds, same idea, okay? Most important thing you'll be looking for is my, at my feet, right, because we want to maintain midfoot pressure. So you'll see here I'm starting in the midline. I'm not on my heels, not on my toes, I'm balanced on my midfoot. And I maintain that balance throughout the lift. That's a little bit forward actually. Compare that to something like this where it's just a hip break. So you'll see in that last one, as my hips broke, my toes would have come off the floor slightly and you lose balance through the scent, not very efficient. Now this concept or this cue to, to maintain your balance through the scent all comes down to midfoot pressure. Midfoot pressure is something you've probably read about or seen about on, on YouTube or other sources or uh, media before. And what we want to do is maintain that midfoot pressure, right? We don't want to go on our toes, we don't want to go on our heels. And that's closely tied with a vertical bar path. You also would have heard people talk about you want a bar path that's perfectly straight. That's not always the case. Sometimes you may need a bar path that's slightly different. I'll uh, put a video link in the description box below that explains that in a little more detail. But more what we're looking for is balance in the whole system. So bar and the lifter needs to stay balanced over the midfoot. That usually means the bar has to stay right in the middle, but for some smaller lifters or some more beginner lifters um, where they're not lifting a, oh, sorry, for some bigger lifters, where they're not lifting a huge amount relative to the body weight, that might, might not always be the case where the bar path has to be right through the middle. But the idea still remains. We do want to maintain balance over the midfoot through the descent. So I'll do one last demo. This is 140 kilos, so 308 pounds. Okay, I'm maintaining balance right before I even start the lift. Now you would have seen there was a little bit of forward lean on the descent and I allowed that forward lean to occur. Under control, not a huge amount, but just enough to maintain balance over the midfoot. Okay guys, that's it from me. I hope you've uh, taken something really informative away from this video. Key point is that the squat is all about balance and position. And we wanna maintain our balance over the midfoot uh, throughout the descent and the start of the lift. So it's not necessarily about bar path, it's about midfoot pressure and staying balanced. And if we're gonna have a hip break style squat, or if you're thinking about hip breaking, you also need to cue chest forward at the same time. Not necessarily chest down, but more so hips back and chest forward in one smooth action so that the slight forward lean counteracts the fact that your hips are moving backwards. The more weight you have on the bar, the less forward lean you're gonna need because you've got weight up here and uh, that, you know, that extra weight is gonna compensate a lot more for the uh, hip, hip break than a lighter load would, would have. But the idea still remains, all right? A light, slight forward lean, maintain that pressure through your midfoot throughout the descent. It's also a really important uh, cue or, or technical point that occurs during the RDL. So, uh, you know, when you're performing an RDL and you're, and you're bringing the bar down, you do have to allow your chest to lean forward or your torso to lean forward to maintain balance. Otherwise, your toes are gonna lift off the floor. If you've got any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. If you haven't, subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll talk to you next time.